Welcome to another episode of Dominique Pernay's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto, and I'm an amateur astronomer and a mathematician, and I'll be presenting Dominique's course to you. Today in our episode number 32, we are going to build on what we did in our last session, which was to calculate the GHA of Aries. And now we get to uh, use that information to calculate the GHA and declination of a particular star. As always, our um, course is based on Dominique's book, Celestial Navigation, and the exercises are based on his Celestial Navigation exercise book. You can find out more about these books and where to order them at marinenavigationbooks.com. Uh, you'll definitely need the Celestial Navigation exercise uh, book uh, because uh, we'll be doing some exercises and the answers are in that book. Also, the tables that you'll need to do the exercises. Uh, luckily, Dominique is kind enough to put a PDF of this uh, exercise manual up on his website, marinenavigationbooks.com. There's also some other uh, free information there, uh, some worksheets, um, this particular slide deck, if you want to review it. Um, but I highly recommend actually purchasing the book and the exercise book uh, if you can. Okay, so stars. On every uh, two pages of the almanac on the left-hand side, you're going to see this column called stars. And uh, the information that you need from this star column will be obviously the name of the star you're looking to take a sight on. And you'll need this thing called SHA, which we'll explain how you use that in a second. And you're going to need the declination. Obviously, the declination we've been doing all along, so that's going to be uh, fairly straightforward. It's this SHA that's the new concept here. So let's see, let's make believe we want to get the uh, GHA of Arcturus. And the um, trick here, it's not so much a trick, but uh, the way you do this is to get the GHA of the star you want to cite, you find the GHA of Aries, which we did in the last episode, and you just add the SHA of the star. Pretty, pretty simple. So let's take an example. Let's say we want to cite Arcturus on June 15th, and we cited it at this particular time, 142540 UTC. So we start as we always do by starting at the hour, the 14 hour mark, and we get the Aries GHA. So here's the table for that date. On the 14th hour, we see the GHA of Aries 113.264. We're going to come back to this Arcturus number. So um, remember this one, 146 and 2.7 minutes for SHA and the declination was north 19 degrees at 10 minutes. And just as we did in our last episode, you have to get the minutes and the seconds and the Aries column for your increments. So we see that it's uh, 6 degrees and 26.1 minutes that we need to add to the GHA of Aries at the 14th hour to get it exactly at the time of our site. So here we are. We've copied over our GHA of Aries at 1400 hours. We added our increment, 6 degrees, 26.1 minutes, and we get a total GHA of Aries at the time of our site of 119 degrees, 52.5 minutes. And to get the GHA of Arcturus, we just have to add that SHA of Arcturus we saw on that other uh, table, which was 146 and 2.7 minutes. When you add those together, you get 265 degrees and 55.2 minutes. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And you do that for any star, not just Arcturus, the same uh, procedure. Declination is exactly what's in that table. There's no adjustments, no fiddling with it. It's exactly what it is, no interpolation. The ar declination of Arcturus is fairly constant, at least uh, for the three days that you'll see on the Almanac page. Now we've got a simple exercise for you to do to uh, make sure that you understand this. Um, we're going to do Vega on the 3rd of July in 2003. Time of site is 1348.12 UTC. Uh, and this little worksheet uh, basically walks you through exactly what we just did for Arcturus, but you're now you're going to do it for Vega. 
And we'll do one more exercise uh, for Beetlejuice. Um, and this will be the complete calculation to get H, C, and Z. So here's your information. Assume that there's no watch error, um, and no, uh, um, any other, any other uh, um, factor that we have to worry about. We're not, we're not going to do HS and HO and compare and do intercept and all that stuff. <clears throat> for right now, we just want to make sure you understand the full, complete calculation for a star. So here's your DR location. You're going to calculate GHA. You're going to uh, calculate the LHA uh, for your location, the declination of Betelgeuse, the ZN and HC, where you should have seen it if you had been at the uh, um, assumed longitude and assumed latitude. All right. So have fun with that. I'm sure that'll be fairly straightforward for you at this point. Our next episode, we're going to look at a different way of doing stars. So the way we just uh, gave you is what I'll call um, the straightforward way, the way we've been doing it for the sun and the planets and the moon. Um, and the stars are basically the same. The only thing that's a little tricky is how do you get the GHA of the star? And that's simple. It's GHA of Aries plus it's SHA of the stars. But pretty much after that, everything is, is pretty much the same. Um, so this other way called selected stars is actually, uh, you're going to find this, um, if nothing else, it's wonderful for site planning. So if you know exactly or around what time you're going to site your stars, uh, this will actually tell you what are your best stars to site to uh, get a fix. Because for a fix, you're going to want to be shooting multiple stars at the same time or around the same time. Uh, and uh, this is a, a wonderful way to, uh, to get into that very quickly. So I'm looking forward to showing you that next time. And uh, we'll see you soon.